Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, I'm Madeline Holly Rosing, the writer-creator of Boston Metaphysical Society. You can find me at bostonmetaphysicalsociety.com, on Twitter, mhollyrosing, or Instagram, mcholly1. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today, as we always are, on this show with a very talented and creative person. She has been on the show in the past, and I've lost track of how many times because I'm thinking it's three, could be four, could be five. But either way, it's an amazing time whenever I have her on the show. The creator of Boston Metaphysical Society, Madeline Holly Rosing, is back again. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thank you for having me on the show again, Kurt. I really appreciate it. I always love having you on because you always bring something new and exciting, and especially with Boston Metaphysical Society. Thank you. We strive for that. <laughs> for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and, of course, what you're bringing this time around to Two Geeks Talking. Well, for those of you who are not familiar with this story, it's about an ex-Pinkerton detective, a spirit photographer, and a genius scientist who battles supernatural forces in the late 1800s Boston. We started with a six-issue miniseries, and when that was completed, went ahead and did four standalone sequels. And what we have on Kickstarter this week, you know, launched March 1st, which was be yesterday for me. <laughs> yeah, time gets distorted after a while, <laughs> is a brand new four-issue miniseries called Mystery at Pikes Peak. And we have the whole team now going to Tesla's experimental station in Colorado Springs. Essentially, they're fleeing arrest in Boston. Tesla's station is really the only safe ha haven they have right now. And while they're there, they meet Tesla's most unlikely partner, Bai Hui Chow, a scientist from the Great House Chow in California. And life gets more complicated when an attempt is made on Tesla's life and Caitlin's psychic abilities take a dangerous turn. Now they must figure out who is trying to kill Tesla and what Caitlin's visions are trying to tell her before anyone else dies. Yes, it's kind of a murder mystery with paranormal and political intrigue all wrapped into one. That's awesome. I love it. You're definitely ramping up the action from what I saw this time around. I love the, the Kickstarter video you had it watching it and I saw it was like four minutes long and I'm like well how are you gonna do a pr four minute promotion and then you had an amazing trailer at the end uh well thank you I'm I'm very lucky to to work with a very talented young man uh, Dean Russell's his name who does all my videos yeah he's a very talented cin cinematographer I met him actually he's my hair colorist son of all things <laughs> so I just go to their apartment and get my hair and makeup done and then walk in the next room and, you know, we, we do the video. Dean does a tremendous job, follows instructions well, but then he puts his own flair on it and makes it even better than I thought it could be. He's great to have on the team. And as you've probably seen, speaking of teams, we have a brand new team on board this time. Gwen Tavares, who did my four sequels. We parted very amicably. She just simply had no more time to do to do comics. She has two children on the age of three, so that should just tell you all you need to know, uh, that she's swamped. So I was lucky enough to find Elizabeth McKenza, uh, who's out of Tbilisi, Georgia, to do the interior art. She's doing a fabulous job. Katie Brown is doing the coloring, and the main covers are done by Angela Wu. And I found her when I was scoping out Mythiopia, it's Ray Chow, his Skies of Fire and Blow, which is currently on Kickstarter right now. I'll, I'll plug him a little bit. I saw a pinup that she had done for him, and I'm like, okay, this, this might work. So we talked, and I brought her on board, and she's doing a fabulous job. I was really psyched to be able to get Rio Burton and Steph C to do the variant covers, because this is the first time we've ever done variant covers. So I just wanted to start small, so we just have two, you know, one for issue one and one for issue two. 
see how it goes. Uh, apparently people are really, really loving it. That's been working out very well. And we have metal covers too. I thought I'd go all fancy. We have a limited amount of metal covers. Trying a number of new things this time. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you're you're definitely uh, ramping up for this particular series and amazing talent that you just spoke of, of course, as well, too. The art is beautiful. Even looking at the artwork from the video itself, I thought it was really amazing as well, too. So you just keep doing amazing things, and I, I don't know how else you're going to top yourself for the next series now. <laughs> well, you, you know, you never know, and I'm... <laughs> But I do spend a lot of time culling through portfolios, find amazing people, and it just, a lot of times it, it depends on scheduling, because I, I talked to a, a number of female artists and they were interested in the project, but they, they were booked up. For when we do the Kickstarter for issues three and four, I've already lined up one variant artist because, you know, I knew ahead of time, you know, I was like, okay, you don't have to do it till July. And she's like, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, talent, there's a lot of good talent out there. It's just finding, it, so much has to do with timing, you know, and their availability. You're already funded and you still have like 28 days left. It's yes. amazing. I, I, you're into stretch goal territory. What stretch goals are you looking forward to either showcasing or maybe unlocking? The first one we have, great, we have six digital independent comics I curated from around and uh, I think people are really going to enjoy those very diverse and different stories and some are action, some are sci-fi, some are a little more thoughtful, but I also have some fun ones coming up. Uh, Alejandro Lee, who designed the pin, I also had him uh, do some magnets and I, I guess people are really loving the magnets, but we changed them up. The, the coloring is really different. You'll once they'll be the next one after this and i do have plan a different um metal bookmark and hopefully we'll do well enough so we can do it in copper but it's uh, of the experimental station so it should look really cool i don't know if you saw the the metal one that we did from last time but it turned out alejandro did that as well and it was so cool <laughs> I think I recall that actually. Yeah, no, that was such unique products for, for your comic. And it's just great to see because you're not going to see that anywhere else except for what you have. And that's just, I love it. Well, in all fairness, I do a lot of my inspiration from Mike Shea, who does Miskatonic High. And he and I talk all the time about uh, stretch goals and, and things like that. And and I will quite honestly say, I steal some ideas from him because I'll see something he'll post and I'll go like, where did you get that? I love that. And so we'll talk and obviously I have my own spin on it. It's different from his, but I have to hand it to Mike Shea for, for giving me a lot of great ideas for stuff to do. I mean, the one thing, of course, is, you know, we do every Kickstarter is a new pin and this one is of the Tesla coil and people seem to be really loving that. Yeah, that that looked really neat. I, I loved uh, in the video and then I scrolled down and I saw on the actual campaign itself, a larger version of it. So I yeah, no, we have that. That's a proof. And I do say that the manufacturer, they do a beautiful job. So you do see a lot of that detail in the pin. Um, it does come out. So just very fortunate to, to work with really great vendors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, you're, you're bringing in unique ideas, unique products. They're they're showcasing what they can provide to you and to provide those that are supporting your campaigns. I, mm -hmm. It sounds like a win-win situation for everyone involved. Yeah. And, and what's even, you know, to me more important is obviously the, the art and, and all the little tchotchkes and, and the fun things that we have, but we're kind of entering into a new phase into Boston Metaphysical Society and the story, particularly since we're now traveling away from Boston and away from the East Coast and experiencing different parts of what I call the great states of America in the Boston metaphysical universe. So you're going to see, you know, snippets of what happened within real history, how it's reflected within the story, and some of the things that I have altered very deliberately. Didn't want people to think that all oh, the great houses just live on the, you know, the East Coast. That's it. You know, there's Boston, New York, and whatever. It's like, no, they're throughout the country from the Midwest all the way to California with different traditions and different agendas. So different businesses, it's it's fun. Since I'm not up on my U.S. history, what are the great houses you speak of in this particular timeline? Within the Boston Metaphysical Universe, our government is essentially a parliamentary oligarchy. Mm -hmm. And it is run by families, and which refer to themselves as great houses. And 
they're like uh, families of industry hmm. where each family is either, you know, builds airships or they build seafaring ships or they're into farming and agriculture or they're coal miners or, you know, something else. They are the ones that run the country. Okay. Good, good to know. I, I, I was thinking Game of Thrones style to that. No, no, it's no, it's fine. It's it's a pretty common trope to you know call things how you know house fill in the blank. You you see that in a lot of fantasy and science fiction. That that's nothing unusual. What was it about the art styles that you're bringing into Boston Metaphysical Society for these four issues that improves it or takes it to another level than what you had in your previous issues? That's kind of hard to say because, you know, my taste and what I look for in an artist, well, I look for a more naturalistic. I'm not a big cartoony type, you know, art person, as you can probably, you know, see. I look for detail, how the characters emote themselves the setup it's one of those things where it's it's intuitive mostly on my part and that i just can recognize that okay i think this person's really going to work and you know particularly you know working with a new artist you are taking a chance and so you really don't know until the page is coming in is like okay is this going to work <laughs> and you cross your fingers and you're like sometimes you do take a leap of faith and so far it's paid off so that's okay you're right it looks beautiful i can't wait to see what issues three and four have in store as well too a lot to go especially with these campaigns the fact that it funded early is a great first step but how are you going to push through the next 28 days or so in terms of promotion and other avenues and to get the word out everyone seems to want to know that well i can tell you i have 24 podcast interviews scheduled <laughs> That is a lot of what I do over the next 28 days. Uh, I talk to people like you, Kurt, and I go on shows I've been on before. I go on new shows. I'm doing a number of new shows uh, this time uh, to reach new people. Um, I've just found it's a great way to mitigate, you know, the dreaded middle part of, of Kickstarters. It keeps it going. I mean... It always slows down for everybody. It's just a matter of how much you kind of do, a, you know, a little constant flow. And of course, sending emails out and, you know, either through my newsletter or through backer kit. And I try very hard not to overdo that because I myself as, as a backer, it can be annoying. I know, I know, but you know, it has to be done. You do it, but I just try to, I try to balance it. So it's, it's not too much and not too little. I had a guest on recently and I believe you know her, uh, Lori Foster from yes. Unlikely. She's Hurt. awesome. Yeah. She was saying how, how amazing you were and in, in what you've produced and had some wonderfully kind words that are in the interview. Well, I think Lori's amazing. So <laughs> she just keeps cranking stuff out and, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, she, she runs a lot of Kickstarters, so I, bless her heart, I, I couldn't do as many as she does. So she, she's a woman of steel, I think. <laughs> we were talking about Cthulhu is hard to spell. Um, it's definitely hard to say, that's for sure, but, uh. Yes. <laughs> but, I actually have a story in that, you know. Yes. Now, now I have to hear about that. It's called The Marriage Counselor, and it's about two of the old gods who decide that they want to divorce, but one of the higher up gods says no you know and to prevent them from divorcing he brings in a human marriage counselor so <laughs> yes it's a it's a dark comedy that's great yeah because they they did talk about that uh that particular one as well too so that's wonderful oh did they, they talked about marriage counselor <laughs> yeah yeah, I thought yeah mj great. massey did the art she, she did a great job she captured the the fun behind it because I know uh, Russell Nolte was the original editor on it. And he, of course, didn't want anything. It's an all ages book. So he didn't want anything too gruesome. She does more cartoony style, which normally I don't, I don't do uh, with my artists. But it fit perfectly for what we're trying to do without it being, what should I say, overly violent. <laughs> so, so, yeah, she did, uh, Melissa did a, a, a great job on it. We're all starting to run yeah. low on the metal covers. Uh, we limited 25. 
And so when those are gone, those are gone. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's it's going to be in a in real interesting ride. I kind of, as you probably know, I did a story for um, Lady Mechanica. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, in reading all the, the background, because I went through, of course, all the volumes before, before I, you know, did the story. Uh, I was really impressed with how he, you know, some of them were murder mysteries. And and I thought, you know, I should go do that. I should just, because I like to have complete things. And with a four-issue miniseries, that's doable. And and have enough space that you can, you know, tell, tell a good story and have a good murder mystery and political intrigue and and paranormal stuff going on. So, um, yeah, I kind of got me my inspiration from Lady Mechanica to, to structure this story uh, a little bit differently. Well, I do hate to say this, Madeline, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you, as always, for coming back on the show. Well, thank you so much, Kurt, for having me. I really appreciate it and helping me get the word out so we can keep on building bigger and better. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is the Kickstarter and when does it end? Kickstarter is on kickstarter.com. Uh, it's Boston Metaphysical Society, Mystery at Pikes Peak. And we end on Friday, March 31st at 11 o'clock in the morning. And that's Pacific Standard Time. You also can check out my website at bostonmetaphysicalsociety.com or queenofmercia.com. It all goes to the same place. Uh, that's my company name. Yes, you can just put in Boston Metaphysical and you will find the right place. There's only one. Well, like I said, that is this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Our YouTube channel is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. The podcast is back after 12 or so years, which you can find at twogeekstalking.podbean.com. But you can search on any audio streaming service. There's a bunch of them there. Search for Two Geeks Talking the word to note the number two i'm the only one there quite literally subscribe like favorite share and of course you'll see this interview and other interviews of madeline's in the past as well too and thousands of others and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking